Greetings from Temple Baptist Church in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Today, a promise that I will share with you from God's Word. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. That promise starts out with an if. It's a conditional promise. God says, I will do what I desire to do in your lives if you will do what I desire in your life. Notice what he says there. If my people. He was speaking originally here in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 to the nation of Israel. But in turn, through the word of God, he's speaking to all of us now, all of those of us who've, who've decided to follow him through Jesus Christ. And listen to this beautiful promise that he gives to each and every one of us. If my people, isn't it wonderful to be known as God's people? Occasionally someone will call me Steve. Occasionally someone will call me pastor. But most often I'm Stephanie's husband or I'm Matthew, Josh, or Hannah's dad or I'm Ryan's papa. Uh, we are known as God's people if we follow after the Lord. And notice as he claims us the promise that he gives to us. If my people who are called by my name, and then there are four things, if we will humble ourselves. Prayer is actually a very uh, humbling act. When we pray, we are literally saying, God, I can't accomplish what needs to be accomplished. And so I'm bringing my concerns, I'm bringing my desires to you. Lord, I realize I can do this because only you are able to do what I need most in this world. In our world today, I think we ought to be praying. And in order to pray, I think we have to come to God and say, God, I don't have all the answers, but Lord, I know that you do. Lord, I don't have all the power, there are so many things that I can't accomplish. In fact, without you, the Bible tells us in the New Testament, we can do nothing. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. And so we must humble ourselves to recognize that God is God and we are not. So there's the first thing, to humble ourselves. That second thing is to pray, to communicate with God to visit with God like we would visit with our very best friend. God knows our most inward parts. God knows what we're thinking. God knows our joys. God knows our struggles in life. And he invites us to bring those things and to visit with him about those things. Occasionally someone will say, Pastor, I need to come in for some counsel sessions. Would you have some time? And I say, of course, you come in. And oftentimes my thought is, what am I going to say? How am I going to answer? And oftentimes I find that they really don't need me to say anything. Most often they just need to visit. They just need to vent. They just need to get something uh, off their heart. And by just coming in and getting it out, it's been very helpful. I'm amused occasionally at the times they'll leave my office and they'll say, oh, thank you so much. You've helped me so much. In reality, I haven't said much of anything. They actually helped themselves. The Lord helped them as they were getting their problem uh, off their heart. And so here we are to humble ourselves. We're to pray. We're to seek the face of God. That simply means we're to seek His way, not our own. We're to seek His will for our lives, not our own. And then it says we are to turn from our wicked ways. Wicked ways are simply uh, those things that do not bring glory to God in our lives. Those things that are not pleasing to the Lord. Those things that are opposite of what God's Word tells us. We all have that sin in our life. And when we turn from our wicked ways, as just simply put, we are to give the Lord our life not only in our hearts, but also with the way we live our lives. We are to practice what we preach. And so there you have it. There's what we are to do, to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek the Lord's will, and then to turn from those ways that don't look like Jesus. And then listen to what the Bible says, then, then and only then, 
When we've done our part, God will always do His part. And notice what His part is. He says, I will hear from heaven. When we pray, God listens. When we bring our hearts to the Lord in prayer, He will hear us from heaven. God is an interactive, ever, ever active source of power and of love and of care in our lives. He says, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive your sin. He will wash us clean. And then I love this part. And he will heal our land. Oh, how our land needs to be healed. We need a touch of God and a touch that only God can accomplish. When the Bible says to heal their land, he literally means to restore the land and its people to peace and security. We need that peace and security in our land today. And honestly, the only way we can get it is when God provides it for us. And in order for that to happen, it's very simple. I'm thankful that he gave us the way that we can have it. Humble ourselves. Pray, seek God's face, and turn from all the ways that don't look like Jesus, that do not please the Lord, to love his word, to live as his word tells us to live. And then, and only then, will the Lord hear from heaven, forgive our sins, and heal our land, to restore us to joy and peace and security that we so long for in this day and time. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for being God. Remind us that we are not. And Father, I pray that you would help us to do that which we ought to have done all along. But Lord, even though we have not, you love us, willing to forgive us, and willing to heal our land. Thank you for this beautiful promise, and may we know yet again your protection, your peace, and your security, and we'll give you all the praise and all the thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and how we love you today.